Hey guys, Broker Brett here with Insurance Nerds with one of our, our old buddies, Aaron Vasquez, who we actually, we wrapped with about, you know, a year and a half ago when you're setting up the digital agency. So again, this is like a follow-up episode. We're doing like Shark Tank here, seeing how people are doing a little further down the line. So how you doing, Aaron? Thanks for coming on. Absolutely, Brett. Thanks for having me. And definitely, it's been uh, incredible this last couple of weeks. Um, as far as from when we connected, I mean, we we're running the gamut from last year, making it through 2019, uh, looking forward to, you know, vision going forward was 2020. We're going to make big things happen. And then out the gates, uh, we all got hit with uh, this pandemic or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah, it's been um, last couple of weeks have been really something else, though. Uh, we'll dive into that in a second. So on an aside, though, don't get me wrong. We want to face, I don't want to say face the negative. We want to deal things as they are. Like everyone's lives are being affected in a direct way. We had a couple over for dinner, like the one couple we've been hanging out with through all this. And it was gnarly how each of us had something kind of heavy, you know, going on around COVID. Not necessarily direct or physical, but it's affecting lives. Um, I really enjoyed our Young Guns broker brews that we did too. Like without COVID, I don't think we would have strung everybody together across the country to talk insurance and startups and what we're doing. That was pretty cool. Yeah. So oh, not only was it cool, I mean, the connections that we we're able to make um, actually just got set up with the tune. Oh yeah, there you uh, go. So, yeah. you know, that was a, a, a blessing there because when it came uh, a need for that outfit, I was like, hold on. I know somebody. Yeah, I got an inside and, man. Yeah, yeah, uh, it happened quick. Chris is definitely awesome on that. Oh, great dudes over there. So it's funny. I'm 35. So for reference, everybody on that call was either 30 or younger, which I think Aaron fits. But uh, these younger dudes, though, and they were impressive, though, weren't they? Like between the automation, between the data scraping, between the stuff they're building from themselves. Um, I just lumped in there and just seemed, you know, younger the energy, you know, look, you haven't aged, you know, you don't have all this white hair. Um, but it was, I don't know, the guys were really cool. And I felt like I had to step up my game after being on the line with everybody. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yeah, well, you know, I didn't know that they were all under 30. I, I just turned 34. So yeah. um, what I think is awesome about it is one, they're already licensed and in the industry. Yep. So anybody who's watching this who's not sure if they want to become an agent at some point, I mean, get the license, get your feet wet, and you'll, you'll quickly know if you're cut out for it or not. It's also um, a way to show you're serious as well. It's kind of like a salt vetting thing. It might be a couple hundred bucks, a couple hours, but if you do that and you show up with a license, somebody say, hey, I'm interested in trying this thing. I heard there's gonna be a lot of opportunity coming up. Yeah. Somebody wants to become a massage therapist because, yeah. hey, it's kind of the same idea. You be your own boss and you get a great, your own client list yeah. and everything. But the goal still is, to get there, you have to get a certification done. You have to meet some certain standards. So yeah, these guys in the uh, Young Guns team though, it was, it was just awesome because yeah. we're seeing what is being done, where they're going, we're seeing the, the um, thought process as it's happening too, which is again, something that uh, our industries kind of drag their feet on mm -hmm. because we're still filling out accord forms like the paper applications and stuff. So yeah. it's like, yeah. But yeah. And, um, so this is kind of industry folks facing, we'll do this on insurance nerds, so they'll get what we're talking about. And we did have Jill McGowan. We definitely tried to have, you know, some ladies on there too who had the right mindset. You know, it's interesting. It's just gamers. People are trying to make stuff happen. But that was really cool. Um, so when you started out, and I'm similar, we started out kind of with a digital agency mindset. And I do think COVID helps us naturally stretch out a little more. You get less like city based or less regionally based and you start thinking a little bit broader but you've gone actually from digital to the brick and mortar i know you've kind of bet on yourself and kind of set something up this year how's that going for you it looks like you're in your own office right now yeah. yep that i am um uh, so that's been kind of the impact covid had on us where um yeah we started off last year saying we're going to be virtual agents we're going to do these you know video calls and and video presentations mm -hmm. and uh, not many people were really quick to jump on it as like a consumer level because you're thinking yeah. like, why do I need to do that? I don't need to do that. And when the pandemic happened, the shutdowns, lockdowns, they're like, look, you know, your networking events are canceled. Mm -hmm. It's not okay to walk into a business and say, hey, I'm here to sell you something. Yeah. So 
I was floored, man. It hurt. I was at home going through social media, looking at it like I need, I need to do something that's going to not only bring business, but continue to help me practice my craft, you know, because we had the uh, business interruption that, mm-hmm. that's still in the air. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had the auto insurance that, you know, they're putting the deferred payments and all that. So there was so much going on at that time still that it was like, you can either freeze up and do nothing, or you can just stick to the plan that we got business that we got to do. I mean, insured yeah. still had questions. You answered them out. But what, ha- what happened is, uh, so one of my, my um, network buddies reached out to me and was like, hey, you know, that meeting we had a few weeks back and that, that uh, office space you're looking at, yeah. you know, we, we talked about it and we looked at some numbers. And I mean, everybody shut down right now except for essential businesses. Yep. So, I mean, we want somebody here who's going to do something for people, not cool. just, you know, hey, I'm here to make a buck, but like, yeah, man. So inside the office where um, we opened up on June 1st of this year and, um, you know, we're helping people out with, with like their, their tech, their basic stuff. You know, yep. we got to do e-signatures and yep. I'm not good. yeah, we help them with that stuff. But That's cool. from there, helping them with like the social media, doing even small jobs like um, faxing, printing, scanning. We're waiting on a notary stamp. Yeah. So little things that add value more than just, you know, I know insurance. Now it's, um, and it's kind of interesting that you had that digital footprint. You went to kind of brick and mortar concept now going back to digital for how you're doing things. You know, people still need insurance. That's one of the beautiful things about this industry. And you mentioned the uh, massage, you know, role, like every time you do massage, you get paid, but you have to do the massage. The thing that's so cool about our industry is how many policies hang on and the retention rate being plus 90%. You know, it's just so hard to get in. And I, I understand now why people don't make it easy, why they don't just walk you in and say, here's a book of business. Here's all the tricks, you know, how they want to see if you can cut your teeth, survive, you know, and those guys went through the war too, you know, but hopefully we'll, make it easier on the guys behind us. Um, is there anything you're seeing marketing during COVID work? Are there any types of policies you're selling more? How have you adjusted your game to the new kind of you know, circumstances, knock on wood, hopefully quasi temporary circumstances? So with everything that's going on on that, that so 2020, you know, that was going to be the year of growth anyways. Right. Um, I expanded into life and health. So I have brought on uh, a few carriers for um, defined benefits or short-term medical or, you know, um, alternative health plans. They're not the Obamacare plans. Um, But the point is that as I was learning all that and then this stuff's going on, yeah, people are are out of jobs and they're now needing their coverage. Um, Maybe that they've been independent contractors the whole time and they're like now like, hey, I want something better than nothing. So those... uh, new markets that I had opened up. I mean, I was really grateful that when the questions started coming saying, can you do this? And I'm like, yeah, like I can. That's cool. Um, And then even here now, so like being in an office, uh, I've reached out to a lot of uh, other agents and asking, look, what do you think? Is it worth it or is it not? And I'm sure many of you watching are probably thinking the same thing. Like it's probably not worth it because you only get like 1% walk in and, it's just not ideal. I'm not sure on the flip of this, if I'll go back as much as I was before, you know, I was there eight or eight or nine to four to five to six. Um, But I still think two to three days in, maybe two to three days out, especially if you're working through stuff with people. And I think when you go to the office, it's like going to the gym though, too. You go there with a purpose, you put your work hat on, you know, my wife's doing DPT school from home. I've been working from home and like, you're a different animal while you're doing business stuff during the day, you know, and it's, it's oh, yeah. kind of hard too to switch gears from like slightly business Brett, which is probably more grumpy than people realize than, uh, you know, back to trying to be a warm and caring husband back to like, Oh, here's this paperwork. And I just spent 40 minutes on this PDF that didn't save. Right. And then I sent it out. And then the customer said they're already insured by their brother and you know, they didn't set it up. Right. <laughs> you're just doing all that. <laughs> and your wife like, you know, wants to talk and you're like, ah, um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it is a little bit easier to do that when you're in kind of the war room, you know? Well, and here's the thing, though. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a quick little tour. Sorry, we're going to yeah, move the camera 100%. around here. 
Go for it, man. Go. Live in the studio. We've only done one other tour of uh, the Goodman office in Orange County. This is good. And that's that's what it's about in real estate, right? Location. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we're going out in the public here. We'll mask up. We won't tell anybody. I appreciate you doing it, though. <laughs> I like I like the insurance over the door. So, is, are you sharing that office with a few other agents that are in insurance, but kind of complimentary? Well, you know, the getting an office was really something out of the blue. Like I didn't expect to get this this yeah. year. It was a meeting that I was having with the realtor because that's what we do. We meet with realtors to say, hey, yep. when you do a deal, give me a shot. 100%. So, something that this building it looks where cool. we live, yeah. uh, this is the yeah. address there. Yep, yeah, yep. it's 100. 100 <laughs> and then it does say that we are on easy street so we're doing insurance on easy street and it's 100. What, is it carefree arizona too yep and up there you see it says carefree town mall that's cool so my point is this is like the city center Dude, no that's great time, <laughs> uh this is where the chamber of commerce was this is where the uh, you know, town hall was all that was this building. Well, free to take it time. outside too. I mean, enjoy the sunshine, man. Yeah. Well, here's your part of it. That's funny. That's cool. So the PO boxes are here. Yep. And the mail comes here every day. Like I don't get mail at my house. I have to come here. I might have to set up an Arizona PO box. We'll officially we'll have two locations. And we'll, yeah. And then yeah, <laughs> we're right there. So as soon that's as cool. you walk in. I mean, you, you cannot miss us. We got our, our setup. We're still waiting on um, some signage, though, because that's actually been that's been a surprise. Uh, you, signage, though, you know, takes takes time to print and deliver, and those guys uh, haven't been able to get inside their facilities. True. So, um, I've I've made do because you know we understand what we know. So we got TVs, like, like insurance and, cribs right now. I'm digging it. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, other monitors set yeah. up for, for digital signs. We got our um, like digital picture frame for a sign here that scrolls through. So That's cool. Yeah. So, so are you licensed across the board, PNC Life and Health? I know we've talked about life before. And then Correct. probably like myself, I try to, I say carry the water on PNC, but be knowledgeable enough to start a lead for maybe group benefits or to do a simple term. And then if it gets to be a more involved case, I might work with like an IMO and co-broker, you know, that's how I've been doing it. But I love being licensed across the board. And I've been saying lately with the insured tax, making things a lot easier and intuitive. I feel like we can sell more things confidently because they're kind of simplifying for us, you know? So I think that's going to be bigger for the agents of the future. Um, and then what states? So you're not just in Arizona, right? You have California, you have a couple other states for your license or? Uh, well, personally, myself, I've licensed in about 11 states. Oh, wow. That's, that's quite a few. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Texas, Florida, mm -hmm. uh, of course, the big ones there, you got to have them. Yep. Um, the agencies in 36 states. Oh, cool. No, that's big. And then yeah. you had, you had some pretty good stuff online too. I know like, it's cool that you, you got the good physical location in the town center. And then also I know online, you know, you're, you've had your own outreach and you kind of do your own branding out there too. So I think that's really commendable, man. Definitely keep that up. That's cool. So, and, and what I was saying with the, the consulting with other agents and getting the feedback that, you know, you're only going to get 1% walk-ins yeah. of people that walk by. I mean, because we're, we're here to do more for the community than just insurance. Cool. It's, it's been really uh, much of a blessing because, you know, we've given away face masks as an opportunity of saying like, look, if you great. want one, this is the only free insurance you're going to get from me. Like yeah. <laughs> I'm not paying your bills, <laughs> but um, yeah, in that time, been able to meet other movers and shakers in the community, cool. people that are on the town council, people that, you know, it, our business is still an old fashioned business. It's mm -hmm. about word of mouth. Mm -hmm. uh, it's still about who, you know, like, and trust. Yep. And, community service. And, and this social media is a great tool to help us get in front of people to, get to know them or them get to know us but does that mean that they're going to like you or that they're going to trust you i honestly think that it allows you to go through the door easier 
<laughs> I think we lost your video. That's funny. Um, I think it allows you to go through the door easier, but you still have to make the call. You still have to knock on the door. You still have to do the request. Uh, for the most part, 95% of people aren't going to be proactive about insurance. Some people may, you know, go for it for themselves with some, some like easy insure tech tools. But most of the population, we're going to have to drag to work on the paperwork. And I get it. You know, we none of us want to do it, you know. And I think that's why, you know, we get to make a couple bucks. My only other plug is, like, there's very few industries that, like, you can generally help people and make really good money, I think. I mean, I, I'm sure there's other stuff out there, like selling organic cheese or something, you know, can help people out. But um, what do you think the agent kind of the future looks like? Do you think... It's a hybrid model. Do you think we sell more lines of insurance? I feel like I'm kind of asking a leading question, but you know. Well, what what I truly believe, especially um, with everything going digital and the need to be digital, especially contactless, mm -hmm. um, hybrid is definitely the the future. But how much is it going to be like an eighty twenty? Um, you know, who's going to really do more of the work? So what? I see are a lot more, um, not just like aggregator companies, but really, you know, the, the MGAs that are mm -hmm. having the insure tech available that oversimplifies layman terms, what policies really do, don't do, and other stipulations. Because uh, what I just learned here, progressive insurance has a penalty fee for canceling a motorcycle or boat policy midterm. Mm but they don't do that for cars and homes. Yeah, that's interesting. And, oh, but also that only applies in some states because they're, you know. Different regulatory so, bodies. From a consumer perspective, I don't care. It should be the same across the board and it should right. be clearly explained so that I know what my options are. So I think when it comes to the future, again, we're gonna have a lot more uh, prompts of digital means. And then when it hits to, like today, we, we go through the, the voice recognition. I'm still hitting zero. I'm still right. like customer service. I need to talk to somebody. I need an answer. Let me speak I, to your manager. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, well, I wonder if the online presence can kind of be tailored to like a click through a little bit. Like, you know, I'm on Broker Brett stuff and it's a little bit more light. Whereas your traditional brick and mortar and maybe your location, and I might be overthinking this, but you want it to look conservative and like, a, you know, a classic business. So I wonder if there almost might be like two different landing pages for two different reasons, you know? Uh, I think that uh, something that we talked about in the Young Guns was the um, digital broker services mm -hmm. being more like a Teladoc. Yeah. I think that people are going to, you know, want to see their, their broker on demand if it's a matter of saying like, I got a problem and you know, we want to handle this because that's how that's people it's are. Gonna be, it's going to be hard to get people, humans out of insurance because when shit happens, like you want a human to work with, you want somebody to call, you want some empathy, you know, and bots are very far from doing that today, you know? Yep. And that, that's exactly what I was thinking with the, um, when you're saying like, what's the landscape going to be like? I mean, when it comes down to it, Anybody who's ever needed to use their insurance, they understand that the agent makes the difference. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what company you're with, it's, it's who you're working with. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to like this 80-20, yeah, you might be able to do most of everything for your policy servicing via no communication. Yeah. But when it comes to learning about a person, when it comes to, especially now, we're without uh, so much of our daily frequent socializing yeah we need to see somebody just to kind of chat with them i've been running just to see other humans and just get outside yeah yeah it's weird it's a weird year uh my dad is german english scottish my mom's mexican but my dad is german english scottish scratch golfer commission salesman very stoic serious guy and he loves the movie of uh, the lion from crimson tide where he like runs a missile drill while there's a fire in the galley you know he's like that's when you run the missile drill while there's a fire in the galley you know like <laughs> when everyone's losing their heads around you that's when you gotta like buckle down hold position or go forward you know um uh, yeah <laughs> probably explains which, a little bit <laughs> which is is kind of the motto within the our industry because i mean if really what happens like Go for you, chaos you get yeah. a claim that happens when you definitely don't want it going on or need it going on yeah uh, what, what what ends up happening um just like again 2020 going forward 
going to be a big year. We're going to have a lot of growth and we've got plans of X, Y, and Z. And all right, we're going to scratch that. Maybe push yeah. it out three, five years. Hey, kid, do you, do you want to move forward with this office or not? Wow, that's a sweet deal. Um, let me think about it, you know? And yeah. well, here we are. So you got to yeah. season, man. No, it's a... Uh... For me, it's always been sure. So it's been really interesting. Um, so when Nick, you know, first invited me on to do the podcast, I wasn't totally comfortable with it. I do joke that May, the first time I ever did it, May I put a little whiskey in my coffee that first morning, unofficially. Um, but it was like, sure, you know, help my buddy, like, sure. It was a lot of sures, you know, it wasn't always like a hell yeah, but it was like, okay. And now I'm getting a little busier. So now I have to be like a hair more selective, but it's just that openness, you know, and kind of embracing opportunities as they come you know oh yeah. yeah well and then especially our industry has been so reactive you know it's always been a matter of like like cars are driving themselves now who's going to insure them yeah oh, well you know come on guys <laughs> um so like something that i think of the future definitely is we're going to have more a la carte policies we're going to have okay. like a personal liability a la carte because oh wow yeah if i don't own property i don't own a car i don't own a house i don't rent a place i'm you know traveling around what happens when i punch yeah. somebody or what happens when i ride that uh, scooter and crash it well i see what you're saying though more bespoke to the person's needs and you'll almost have like modules of risk rather than selling an actual policy you might be able to pull in components and then sell that node that's really interesting yeah yeah because i know with uh yeah. again renter's insurance you get your 10 percent that goes around the world with you or your home insurance but but what if you don't have renter's insurance then you don't have personal articles coverage when you're taking your macbook pro from you know one in place to the other yeah no that's interesting man i definitely made a note and i'll bug you if we come up with a way to sort of bespoke neat risk and kind of like package them together outside of traditional like buckets you know that's pretty cool which actually, just to, to uh, let you know, I just found a market for the uh, standalone personal liability. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And as far as even it being available, I was like, wow, that's awesome. You know, good to yeah. know. But it, it's still a product that's a little bit more than people expect. <laughs> RLI has a cool, really easy, I got it through First Connect, actually, uh, independent umbrella that you can put on top of most things. It's pretty cost effective Sweet. and everything. Yeah, check out RLI's umbrella. Um, well, I'll let you go. So we've done this once. We did it like a year and a half ago. You're making progress. You're moving in. You got the brick and mortar. You got your sales down. We'll check in again in like a year. But keep it going, man. Keep up the uh, good spirit. Keep connecting with the community. I'm pumped for you. Definitely, definitely. Well, I appreciate you, Brett. Definitely, you know, the connection that we made last year and then throughout the year and then again here uh, this week. And then uh, any of the other insurance nerds, you know, feel free to reach out. And again, I know that most of you guys are already in the industry, but I've uh, referred a few people that saying like, I'm thinking about it. Oh, you got to check out the insurance nerds. Yeah. Aaron Vasquez, RIC insurance, uh, out of Arizona, multiple States, but great dude does a great job on social media and just being enthusiastic for our neighborhood. We'll, uh, we'll catch you soon. Aaron. Thanks buddy.